Hello everybody, this is integration by partial fractions in four simple steps. This will guide you in the way of processing and completing an integral which cannot be done by any other means than partial fractions quite simply and possibly, hopefully, more simple than you have learned in other courses. Um, I know I learned when I first learned this a couple months back, um, about half a year ago, I learned it, this this nice four simple step way through a uh, unknown source, and then just recently, during the throughout the course of uh, BC calculus, uh, was taught this. And uh, as as the as the as the teacher was going over the uh, process in which to do integration partial fractions, I peered up at the board and had to say to myself, like, what is going on? There was just so much um, mess and it was just so tedious work and it just took up like the whole chalkboard to do one problem. And I mean, even with this, I mean, it gets lengthy, but that, it, there's just stuff all over the board. Whereas this, you can keep it down in nice four simple steps, get it done and out of the way, and it's much more simpler this way. So, hope you guys all enjoy this segment of uh, calculus, BC style. All right, so the first example that I'm going to get into today is the most basic one I could think of off the top of my head. So what we have to do is, by partial fractions, I'm just going off, basing off, like hopefully you guys already know the basis behind it and where all the notation comes from, for what I'm about to do. It's just trying to give you a simpler way to do it. So um, the way that we've been taught in previous courses and just recently for those of you out there with uh, the same the same BC class as I am um, who this video is primarily intended for although if you're not and you just found this randomly on the inter interwebs then uh, you can follow along as well I mean it's all the same basic principles if you have not seen this before or learned this way before and you think that your previous instruction was a tedious mess and which is like ridiculous with the amount of uh, scratch work that you have to do and you can follow along with this four simple steps, and I'll just jump right into it right now. Now, the first step includes two parts. The part one of the first step, you kind of you kind of all do this together. But part, the first thing you need to do is I come out to the side and just break this denominator into its two uh, its two pieces. Factor it out just like normal if you're doing integration or parts a, a different way. So it's obviously x plus one, x minus one. And now, following the integration of parts stuff, I come over to the, the right side of my equation and do my a plus b. And this is part two of step one. But I usually, you know, once you get used to it, it all just happens at once, so I label it as step one. Um, and so under the a, I take the first part of my factor denominator and put it under there. And then under b, take the second part, whatever's left over, and x minus one. Now that I have that set up and ready to go, jump into part two. Part two consists of two pieces as well, however put together, it just makes this one whole step and it makes it a lot more simpler. What you're gonna do is you gotta you gotta envision this as you're getting a common denominator. And the way you're gonna do that is by basically it's almost like a cross multiplying here. You're gonna multiply this numerator by this denominator because that's what you end up doing anyways if you were to like go and solve this out um, you would multiply this whole side by x minus 1 over x minus 1 and so on and so forth for the other side but for the for the uh, purpose of what we're doing here just think of it as cross multiplication where you take the denominator from the opposite side and multiply by the numerator on the other side um, and this is it in its most simplest form so you just carry over the x minus 1 multiply by the a and then I um, follow under here, and the integral later will come down here. So on the right side, um, a times x minus 1. And it, don't factor it through or anything. Keep it like this, because this is going to make it a lot simpler when we get to the end. So you leave it in its um, undistributed form, and you cross again, and this time it's, and you leave the plus sign, plus b times x plus 1. And now, oh, that, that's a terrible x. Why don't we do that? x plus 1. And now that you have this, the last part of step 2 is to obviously make it an equation but put an equal sign and you gotta make it equal to your numerator from the original integrand. And this will work 
all the time. Whatever the numerator is. Say the numerator isn't 1, sometimes it's going to be like a, another polynomial on top, just set it equal to that polynomial. And I'll do an example of that where we can see the new challenges that it brings forth when you have another equation on top that you got to set it equal to. you got to remember to do an, an additional um, little thing that you might forget to do because, you know, whatever you do to one side, you got to do it to the other. And now, that step, now, alright, so now step two is over. I'm getting into step three. Step three is another two piece, piece of a, a big puzzle in the grand scheme of things. Um, but again, uh, once you get used to it, you'll find that it all just combines to one and you have three steps that you can follow. So, part, step three consists of getting the critical points of this integrand which are wherever the denominator will be zero or it's undefined. So what I like to do, instead of just looking at the integral, look at how we split it up. It's quite obvious here because that's how you would find your critical values anyways, is when you have it split up, you know, you set them both equal to zero to figure it out. So it's much easier to just come over here and look at your factored part, figure it out where does this side equal zero, where does this side equal zero. And for this case, we're going to have two values being negative one and positive one. So I like to, I like to write... Um, on a, one line below my equation, y equals negative 1, y equals 1. Again, it doesn't matter what order you have these in, just you're going to plug them in one at a time. Or, excuse me, not y. I'm in the mode of y's right now, I guess. x. Whatever variable you got up there, x equals negative 1, x equals 1. Now, these are, gonna, these are gonna be the numbers that we plug in for the other part of step 3. So, first, you just copy the line down and plug in your number for x, your critical point for x as you go along. And every time you do this, one of the variables is going to be multiplied by zero and it's going to cancel out. And if that doesn't happen, you did something wrong, you need to go check your critical points. And I'm just going to do the same thing again on the bottom here. So on the top line, you have negative 2 times a plus zero. So negative two a is equal to one. To get a divided by negative two and a is equal to negative one half. So I come over here, a equals negative one half. And next we do the same thing for b. So b is equal to one half. Here. So I mean it's not safe to assume that you should get like some number for a that is going to be just a negative sign in front of it for b, as we'll see later. Um, so now that you have these values, we move on to the fourth and final step, which includes taking the A's and B and substituting it back up into your um, your your um, like factored out or partial when you did the partial uh, fractions for the denominator down here. You plug them back in up there, and you get so you just plug in negative one half for A and leave it as it is. Don't go changing stuff all around. Just plug it straight in and b is one half over x minus one. And you drop your integral sign on it and dx. So this is basically like integrating this plus the integral of this. You can split it up into two or you can just leave it like this and think it through in your head. So step four, again, is just plugging in a and b for the values and then integrating. And mostly, and all the time, you're going to get some natural logs going on. And what I like to do is just leave it like this, so that way I can just take whatever's in the numerator, because it's a constant, treat it like I was pulling it out front, because, you know, when you're differentiating or integrating the constant, nothing happens to it. So I just drop it right down, leave it how it is, and then you pretty much have, once you take that out, 1 over x plus 1, so the way you integrate that is the natural log of x plus 1, and don't forget your absolute values. Um... And then for the second one, same thing. Bring down to one half. And natural log of x minus one. Don't forget plus c because we're doing indefinite intervals. And you can go from here to simplify this. You can factor out a one half, factor out a negative one half, however you want to do it. Combine combine your natural logs through your properties of logarithms. And that should get you whatever answer you